everyone. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel called Living in Hayward, where I talk about all things real estate related and about living in Hayward. I'm Audrey Miller. I'm the broker owner of Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team. And joining me today is Tara from Johnson Bank. Tara, tell us a little bit about yourself. As Audrey said, I'm Tara, Tara Nybauer with Johnson Financial Group. I'm a, a Vice President Senior Mortgage Law Officer. I've been with Johnson Bank um, just over seven years and I've been in a lender for um, about 14, in the industry about 26. I think okay, so you're bringing a lot of experience to the table yes. when someone <laughs> hires you to help them yes, with their absolutely. mortgage. That's <laughs> awesome. And I've worked with Tara many times with different transactions. She does a fabulous job. Oh, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her on today. Well, thank so, you, Audrey. Yeah. Happy to be here. Thank you for being here. So let's start with the question of a pre-approval letter or sometimes called a pre-qualification letter. First of all, Tara, what is the difference between the two of those? Sure, so um, a pre-qualification letter is basically a, a not, uh, uh, where it's not sent to underwriting, it's not fully underwriting. Okay. Um, so we may get verbal in information from the borrower, you know, for their income assets sure. or whatever, or we might get the actual documentation. Yeah but it's not something sent to underwriting. Okay. Um, we can issue those, but um, they're they're not as... Um, Basically don't carry as much weight right, exactly. as a pre-qualification right, letter, right. which has then been sent to your underwriting department for them right. to verify all of the information. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, whereas a pre-approval letter, we gather all the documentation, um, we you know run credit, sure. and then once it's, once it looks like it's going to go through, then sure. we send it to underwriting and it's one to two business days and then okay. we have pre, uh, fully pre-approval. Okay. Uh, All right. Fully underwritten pre-approval. There we go. And that is that is what you would want to have to, um, well, I'll just ask it this way. Why is it important to have a pre-approval letter, especially a fully underwritten pre-approval right. letter? Right. So there's a few different reasons. Um, one is being that the buyer knows that what they what they qualify for, yeah. what their borrowing power mm -hmm. is. And so then they're not getting their hopes up on a house sure. that they looked and fell in love with. And you know, now they're so disappointed. Of course, you being a realtor, right? Uh, you're, you're not wasting your time showing them houses that they can't afford. Right. The seller yeah. knows that they are pre-approved. So that gives them, you know, some um, peace of mind when right. they get the offer too. I mean, a lot of times these days, things are pretty competitive. Right. So sellers are often requesting or requiring that there's a pre-qualification exactly. letter yep. with the offer. Yep. So so having that done first, you know, I'll have people call me and they'll be like, I want to go look at houses. And one of the first things I say to them is, have you spoken to a lender? Have you called Tara? <laughs> are you, <laughs> you. you pre-qualified? <laughs> because it is just kind of a, a waste of everyone's time, yeah. honestly, yeah. to start running around looking at houses. And like you said, if a buyer gets their hopes up, that's a bummer for them. They find right. out, oh, that house was three hundred thousand. I can afford two fifty. Exactly. You know. Right. Yeah. So that kind of taking care of that part first will save a lot yes, of trouble exactly. in a lot of different ways. So. Yep. yep. Yes. And what types of information do you need from a buyer for them to get pre-qualified? So um, we would need an application, which we have a um, paper form. Okay. Um, I have an online application that I can share the okay. at the end. Um, sure. Um, or you know, I can take it over the phone. I can meet them in person, whichever okay. works best for them. Okay. Um, and then I gather income, asset documentation, anything that would pertain to the loan sure. to get them approved. And then um, I run credit. Okay. I, think I was just going to ask that. Yep. You run the credit yep. as well. That exactly. Then. Yep. And then, um, and credit's good for 120 days. Okay. So that's how long the pre-approval's good for. That makes sense. If they don't find a house in that time frame, they can always, I can just always run, rerun credit sure. with their permission. Like if they're, if they're just not finding anything, I'm not just going to go run it because right. it's expired. Right. Right. But yeah, so then we just um, make sure it, it looks like they're going to okay. qualify and we send it to underwriting. Okay. And that's one to two business days. Okay. Well, very good. That sounds like it's not too painful of a process. No. Yeah. It might be for some, <laughs> right? I guess, depending on the news you get, maybe. Right. But yeah. And this is, you know, kind of leading into the next question, which is what are the ratios? Sometimes people will ask, like, how much do I need to make? Right. to be able to borrow to buy a three hundred thousand dollar yes home. and that's a very valid question and a very important right. one too. 
Um, so the debt to income ratio is just basically um, taking your gross monthly debt, okay, um, divided by your gross monthly income. Sure. Um, and it's um, and the typical uh, is forty five percent. Okay. Um, I've seen higher. I've seen where it has to be lower. It all depends okay. on their credit score, their um, down payment amount. Okay. Um, so it can vary. But um, typically, forty five percent. Correct. And when you say debt, you're talking things like car loans, student loans, any any month. It's not like your groceries or your utilities, no, but right. it's like any not cell payments, payments, not yeah. auto insurance. Sure. It's yeah. It's just based. If you have a current primary home. And you're not selling right. it, or you're buying a second. That home. would be part of we it. We would include your tax yeah. insurance and mortgage okay. payment. And yeah, but no cell phones, no auto insurance, no utilities. Sure. So okay, yeah. well that makes total sense. So once they've kind of realized what they can borrow, and they find a house, then let's talk about what are the next steps after that. Okay, so once the buyer has been pre-qualified, they've found out how much they can afford based on their debt to income ratios. Um, one of the other things that people ask a lot is what credit score do I need to be able to get a loan? Sure. Um, so when when credit is pulled, we typically, or we pull from three credit bureaus, okay. TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. And if there's three scores, we use the middle okay. for each borrower and the sure. lower of the middle. Um, and typically 620 or higher is okay. your best. Uh, typically 620 and higher is your um, what you need okay. to qualify, um, but it can vary okay. depending on the rest of the the risk of the rest of the file, the sure. strength of the rest of the file. I've seen people get pre-approved with a lower credit score than 620. I've seen people not get approved okay. with a higher credit score than 620. Sure. It depends on down payment, um, you know, your debt to income ratio. So sure, it, it, other factors. A lot of this okay. stuff does depend on the whole picture. And sure. You know, the bar yeah, exactly. But as a kind of a, like Tara said, as sort of a rule of thumb, I guess I'll say 620, you probably want to have at least a credit score of 620. Um, and if it's lower than that, my understanding is you have some tools that you can provide to a borrower. Yes. So Suggestions for yeah. how to improve their credit? Yes. Okay. Um, so I do want to just mention, um, if sometimes borrowers don't have any credit. Okay. Um, and with that or, or no score. Sure. Um, we can still typically do get them, get them pre-approved, um, which would be with non-traditional credit, which okay. would be verifying the last, the most recent last 12 months of rent payments, sure. utility bills, um, auto insurance, that sort of stuff. Otherwise we can add a co-signer um, if they have no credit. That okay. Can help. Sometimes we can add a co-signer if the assets or income isn't enough, you know, to get the deep debt to income ratio sure. down. Um, but some programs don't allow a non-occupant co-signer, so it just all depends. Okay. I'm really glad you brought that up though, because I've actually run into that before with buyers who they didn't have bad credit, they just had rented their whole lives and never had a credit card, which in right. a way you could argue right. means <laughs> You know, exactly. they're managing their money well, yes. but they just didn't have credit, period. And so right. I'm really glad you brought that up. And then yes. if someone has low credit, which is a different issue, that um, then you can maybe give them some suggestions right. on that as well. So Correct, yeah. And okay. they, they could always go to um, annualcreditreport.com. Okay. It, it gives them a it gives them a breakdown of what their credit report or what their credit is. Okay. It doesn't give a score, I believe you have to pay for that. Sure. There's other tools like Credit Karma. If you yeah. have a credit card, um, a lot of credit yes. card companies will I've give you that a score. My, yeah. Or if you have a um, deposit account with Johnson Financial Group, sure, um, it do, we do give you a score. Okay, so that, that so, way you can get, there's lots of tools out there to get a general idea right. if you're in the ballpark and then from there. Yep. And if you, you, if you um, know you have iffy credit or if you're wondering, you know, what do I have good credit or don't right. I? Like you can give me a call and I can go over, you know, that with you. Perfect. Explain maybe what you need to do to sure. improve it or. Yeah, that's a resource that people often maybe don't think about. Exactly. That a lender can help them with besides right. just the loan process right. in general. So, yep. okay. And then what would you say are your most popular loan programs? Sure. So, um, it, of course it depends on the buyer's needs. Right. Um, 
but typically I see 30 year fixed rate conversion okay. mm -hmm. with, you know, varies 5% to 20% down. Okay. Um, first time home buyers is a pretty popular sure. program and they can do as little as 3% down. We also have um, grants that, grants and down payment assistance okay. that they can get, possibly get to help for the down payment. Sure. Okay. Um, that's that's always good to know and these are yes. things that somebody could yep. ask you about. Right. Too. And there there can be income limits on the down payment assistance. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. As well as some of the first time home, home buyer yeah. programs. Not all of them. Um, but in then second homes, is, yes. of course we have a pretty good market for second homes here. Right. We and sure do. That's yeah. I'd say probably 60 to 70 percent of my yes. business as a right, real estate right. agent yeah. in this area. Yeah. So, And we'll talk about second home loans in just a little bit, but I wanted to circle back to one other thing you mentioned. Oh, sure. You said conventional loans, five to 20% down. I find that people have it in their heads quite often that conventional loans equals 20%. Exactly. It doesn't. It does not. There, no, you can do like a conventional. One of the huge yes. Myths. Yeah. Their biggest myths, yeah. Right, you so. can do a conventional type loan versus an FHA or VA or USDA type exactly. loan. Exactly. Conventional type loan, without putting 20% down. Right. You will there, pay private, private mortgage, mortgage insurance until yeah. you reach the 20% equity. Right. That can depend on the occupancy. Like if it's an investment, you might have to pay it longer, but sure. first, first home and second, or primary home and second homes, it's um, usually once you get to 20%, you can cancel yes, the, PMI. the PMI. But don't count yourself out for a conventional loan just because right. you don't have the 20% exactly. saved down. There's yep. other options right. on that front. So. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, so speaking of second homes that we referenced just a bit ago, is there anything different in closing costs or in the interest rate or the process when buying a second home? So um, with a second home, the, um, um, the closing costs are basically the same as a primary. Okay. There's really nothing different. Um, the down payment requirement is um, a primary home. You can do as little as 5% or 3% with a primary or with a first home buyer. But okay. 10% is the minimum for a second home. Okay. Of course, that would require private mortgage insurance of yes. less than 20. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, the, the interest rates, um, our interest rates right now are currently in line with primary homes. Okay. Up until just recently, we have been able to offer that. Where um, in April of 2022, or prior to April of 2022, yeah. primary homes and second home rates were the same. But then Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, who are the investors on um, for most a lot of lenders. Sure. Um, they increase their loan level price adjustments. Okay. Which basically means that they're they increase the interest rates okay. on second home. So why do you think that Freddie and Fannie increase those rates for second home loans? My understanding is that the Federal Housing Finance Agency um, made the fee adjustments in order to um, facilitate equitable and sustainable access to home ownership. Okay. So is that in in layman's terms? Does that mean they felt like there were too many people purchasing second homes. I, and that's my thought. Yeah. Is they, they're trying to um, uh, cater, or well, yeah. maybe lack of a better word, um, to like first time home buyers yeah. and primary homes. Right. Because you know. we do, I mean, we see it in our area, and I'm happy that the second homeowners are here, but they do purchase a lot of homes that could be going to primary people. So, right, exactly. Either way, Freddie and Fannie did increase the interest rate, is that correct? That's for correct. second home correct. loans. But Johnson Financial Group, we are able to currently offer um, second home interest rates in line with primary home interest rates, which a lot of lenders yeah. don't have that That's option. That's amazing. That's huge. absolutely something that a buyer would want to know. And how are you able to do that? Um, well, Johnson Financial Group knows that our market is a lot of second homes right. and want to give, you know, be able to offer the your buyers the best interest rate right. in term. Um, and, and, and their Johnson financial group has worked really hard to, you know, accommodate able to us, do that. So, That's yeah. huge. So you have different investors other than Freddie and Fannie for the right. second home. And that is something that a lot of buyers may not know. And one of the reasons why you may want to contact Tara besides her experience is that I did a bunch of checking lately for another client and Johnson financial group had this was a month ago or so, and I, this is being recorded in May of 2024, but they had the best second home loan program Yay. that I was able to find. So <laughs> so that's a big deal that their, inv their investors for their loans are not Freddie and Fannie. Correct. 
Correct. Yeah. And, well, well, we saw the second man and, yeah. and another investor, but and not Fannie. But right. But yeah, that is the um, way. We Bottom work. line, you're able to keep your second home interest rates in line with primary. Exactly. And a lot of other lenders are not able to do that right. from my experience. Yep. So. All right, and then the question that everybody wants to know the answer to, what are interest rates gonna do in 2024? What well, is your thought on that? Unfortunately, my crystal ball broke right yeah. before this interview. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we know exactly. Right, um, but no, the well, as you know, the market's very volatile right now. Right. Um, at the beginning of the year, the feds um, mentioned that they were probably going to do three to six okay. um, decreases. Right. And that didn't happen, obviously. Yeah. Um, a month or so ago, I had read that they were going to maybe do start doing them in June. Okay. And then now they're saying September and maybe not even now till December. Yeah. Or, or um, 2025. Okay. So with that said. Yeah. If you have to take a higher interest rate when you right. buy your house, mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Because you can refinance. Johnson right. Financial Group does not have any seasoning time for a rate and term okay. refinance. Sure. And the costs are very minimal. Sure. So that's, that's, a question. that's a really good option because some people are kind of frozen in indecision because of the right. interest rate. So if you know that you don't even have to wait a certain length of time is what right. I'm understanding. Right. Yep. And some if, lenders you do. Yeah. And but, if the rates come down, you could choose to refinance. That kind of takes some of the pressure off. Right. So I think is the general thought, I'm just asking, is the general thought that they will come down that eventually? That is the general thought, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just didn't so. happen as soon as they thought. Yeah. Um, and it's an election year, right. so. Yes. Um, yeah. That just... may be impacting things. And I had heard that, and you might be able to verify this, but when the jobs market had come out a few weeks ago, unemployment was lower than they expected. So that maybe went into their yeah. There's well. there's a lot of different things that they look at yeah. um, that determine whether yeah. they're going to drop. And the Fed rate doesn't necessarily coincide with the mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. um, so rates, the Fed rate could go up and maybe mortgage rates go down. Sure, you just never know. Yeah. But it follows the ten-year Treasury. Yeah, basically. Okay. All right. Well, that's so you know a lot rates. more about this than most of us do. But I just wanted to. Hear. So your <laughs> prediction is that rates will stay. Pretty that's steady. Are you probably think? through the summer? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's really hard to say. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that they drive, right. of course. Yeah. Um, and like you said, nobody really knows, but I just had to ask because sure, you're right. with me today. So, <laughs> anyway, if you are looking to buy a house and you're looking for a local lender in the Hayward area, Tara with Johnson Financial Group. She's an amazing lender. You've heard about some of their great loan programs. Yeah, how can somebody get a hold of you, Tara? Well, they you can either email me, call me, stop in my office, text me. All um, right. And I will have a, there's a slide. Yeah. We'll have my information on it. I do also have a website with an online application, which will be um, in that slide. Yeah. Um, and then, um, or stop in maybe. Did you say that already? Yeah, yeah stop in. Okay, yeah. you can stop in too. <laughs> Either way, there's lots of ways to get a hold of her, and her information will show on the screen here, yes. so you'll be able to reach out to her. That online application can be really handy. Yes, too, you can so. do it in the convenience of yeah. your home, living room, whatever. And then wait to hear, you know, what the what the results are, whether you can afford the house of your dreams or right. not, or if Tara can help you make it happen. So right. exactly. Well, thank you so much thank for coming you. today and doing this uh, interview. I'm sure that viewers will find it very helpful. And as always, if you like my channel, you can subscribe. Um, if you want to leave a comment, that would be great as well. Or if you want to share it with your friends or family, I'd be happy to have you follow along. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell in and around the Hayward area, feel free to reach out to me.